Hi, Roadrunners. All right, this is dribble day, basketball focused. Um, but before I get into dribbling, I want to talk about why I like dribbling and why I kind of picked this video as one of my first ones to share. Um, all growing up in my neighborhood, there was lots of kids out playing basketball. And that's where I kind of like learned. I also have an older brother that played basketball. And when he was a senior in high school, they took state. That means that they like won out of all the high schools. And they um, won 31 games and lost zero. They went 31 and 0. That's really cool. Um, and uh, I loved going to those games. Um, and I also loved playing too. And um, when I played in high school, my junior year, um, my basketball team that I was on, we took state. And I actually have um, my photo album that, um, and here is actually a, a photo clipping of the newspaper that day. I don't know if you can see very well, but there's Coach kissing the trophy that we won. And that was part of the, um, this little thing inside here is a piece of the net. Um, and another cool part about that day that was really <clears throat> memorable for me was the boys basketball team from my high school. They played right after us. We played the Highland Hawks, which are, is part of Gilbert Schools, actually. I was grew up in Mesa Public Schools. I went to Mountain View. Um, so I don't know where maybe you have parents that went to school, high school around here. I wonder where they went. Um, and you can maybe tell me on our um, uh, Google Classroom or on that photo album. That would be funny. Um, what else? Oh, so the boys, they won right after us. So both boys and girls teams won the basketball championships that year, um, my junior school year. And so I have a real love for basketball. It's like one of my favorite weeks at school when we play. I really like to see develop kids develop any school or skills. You don't like, if you don't love basketball, fine. Um, if you don't love dribbling, fine. There's probably something that you do love, or maybe you can take the kind of a practice ideas and apply them to other things. Okay, so let's talk about um, the ball and it being aired up enough, the parts of your hand and like good basic skills. And then we'll start to do some dribbling parts. Um, when you're practicing, say I give you something to practice and that's where you're challenged. Then maybe pause the video there or make a mental note. And that's the thing that you should practice next and develop that skill first. Because I'm going to progress like from easier to harder. And so as you maybe get better at that thing, then progress to the next thing. Maybe there's only one thing out of this video that you're going to practice today. Maybe you're just going to be practicing just right hand, just left hand, and eyes up. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's where you're at as the dribbler. Maybe you need to be practicing a spider dribble. Maybe you need to be, need to be practicing dribbling between your legs and changing direction. Um, so I'm going to try to go from, like I said, beginner to intermediate and or easier to harder and bouncing the ball it being um aired up enough to play with and dribble with sometimes there is too much in the ball and if you play, apply just a little bit of a push to the ball it'll bounce too high like way up to your head that's too much air you want when the ball um lands like kind of when you release it right at your hip that it kind of almost comes up about to your hip again it's going to lose some height because that's just the way things are and it's fighting gravity um, or you put it all the way up above your head off to the side and you let it bounce and you kind of do like scarecrow arms or like freeze and it all comes up about to about your elbow. That's, that's like a, a good amount of air in your ball. Um, and uh, a junior size ball is probably more appropriate for a smaller size tan. So if you're a kindergartner, first, second grader, and then as you get a little bit older, a uh, larger size ball is going to work well for you. Um, okay, so that is ball, like your air check, and because otherwise if your ball is not aired up enough or too much, then you might find your practice is kind of hard. So that's going to create some success or failure there. Um, parts of your hand that you work with. You don't work with your hand too much. You really just work with your fingers, and you really do push the ball down. You're going to notice that you're going to kind of press through your elbow a lot, and you want the ball to always kind of be returning to your waist when you're dribbling. Um, you wanna be dynamic in how you stand from standing to like getting lower because in basketball, somebody's gonna be I'm trying to take the ball away from you. And so we're gonna talk about how you can try to keep the ball dribbling and um, protect the ball still. 
right and left hands. So um, you want to be able to use both your eyes. You want to have your eyes up, not on the ball. As a beginner, that's my, that maybe is where you need to be. Like you need to get that visual feedback from the ball first. Checking down and checking up is totally normal. But in basketball, you want to have your eyes up so that you can be ready to pass the ball to somebody open that might be like closer to the basket than you. Um, so right and left hand and the V dribble. Those are um, some of our main things. The V dribble is um, where you change from one hand to the other in your dribbling. And it's called a V dribble because when the ball bounces down on the ground, like where my elbows are right now, so the ball bounces to the ground and bounces back up, it makes like a letter V. So getting that V shape too and having your hands kind of to the side to manage the ball instead of like um, will be helpful. Okay. So. Uh, let's talk about dribbling rules in basketball, and then we'll get to the, the doing. Okay, so in basketball, do you know how many hands are allowed to be on the ball at a time? Dribbling means the ball is bouncing off the ground and coming up. Are you allowed to put two hands on the ball? I'll demonstrate. Are you allowed to do this? The answer, hopefully you were shouting at me or not if it's like supposed to be quiet time in the house, but um, it is, no, you're not allowed to use two hands on the ball at all, ever. It's only one hand or the other. So your left hand is the one that like makes the capital letter L going this way. And the other one is on your right hand. A lot of us, um, we have left-handed and right-handed students, maybe in your message to me, you can tell me if you're right-handed or left-handed. But and if, as a basketball player, you just want to be good with both. You're going to have a favorite, though. That's okay. Um, all right. Let's see. Okay. So in basketball, you're only allowed to use one hand at a time. You're also not allowed. Okay. Here's another rule. Are you allowed to dribble, pick it up, put two hands on it, and dribble it again? And the answer is no. You're only allowed to dribble it. And if you switch hands like that V dribble, like when it goes from side to side, if you pick the ball up, what are your choices next in basketball? And I'm actually gonna pause this now so you can kind of see feet. Okay, so we were just talking about if you dribble, you pick it up, you're not allowed to dribble again. That is also a double dribble. So there's two double dribble rules. Two hands, that's double dribble, and dribble, stop, dribble again. They're both violations or fouls, as we call them in sports, and they're not allowed. Um, so what would I do if I was dribbling? And um, again, when I'm dribbling, I want to press down. I almost kind of like throwing the ball at the ground, and I'm ready to get it again. My hand is just ready there. The V dribble again is side to side. See that letter V that it like makes? Look at that cross curricular stuff. All right, <laughs> what sound does the letter V make? All right, so side to side, sixth grade's like, oh my goodness, cook. So if you're like past these things, maybe fast forward through the video, um, add music if you want. Okay, so maybe go lower or actually just join me right now, side to side. So that's some V dribbling. Okay, but we were talking about um, what happens next. So if I were to dribble and say I lost my dribble, that's what that's called when I pick it up, or um, like defense came up, or um, like they were going to try to take the ball away from me. Remember that's what defense means. Now there's um, some pivoting rules, some footwork rules. So in basketball, if I were to dribble, and they, my coach has always taught me to pop stop when I picked up the ball, and that, or a jump stop. That's so that I can choose which foot I pivot with. Pivot means like something stays in place and something else moves around it. So like a pinwheel, you know those things that you like blow in, you know, and it spins. That little spot that keeps the uh, spinning wheel in place. That's the pivot point. So let's say that I just picked up and I hop stop. I get to choose now which foot I pivot with. 
And once I do though, that foot is stuck on the ground. So I just decided to make my left foot my pivot foot. And in basketball, I'm not allowed to dribble again now. This foot has to stay still. I can go in a complete circle, but this foot has to stay put. So I need to just like always keep my toe in one spot. Your whole heel can lift. And now I have a couple choices. What would my choices be in a basketball game if I dribbled and picked it up besides pivoting? I could pivot. And the reason you pivot is to try to make space between you and the defender. Like pretend to me, like over that way, there's a basketball hoop and I need to pass it to a teammate. Oh, coach gave you the answers, but you're probably already yelling it at me. I'm gonna pass the ball to a partner. So I stopped my dribble, I could either pass or what else could I do? I could try to shoot it if I was close enough, right? So pass or shoot once I lose my dribble. So let's show what that looks like again. Dribble, pop, stop. And then I'm gonna use this pivot foot now. Pivot, pivot. So I can choose which side. And then you always wanna keep the ball away from where the defense is and protect it by over, by protecting it or down low. So that's pivoting and protecting the ball. And again, after you dribble and you pick it up, you gotta pass it or shoot it. And am I allowed to do this in basketball again? No. Okay, next, moving on. All right, so that's some of that. Now let's talk about um, how we can try to work on our V dribble practice, our right and left hand and then some between the legs and behind the back things. We'll try to throw the spider dribble in there at the very end. Again, as you're practicing, pause it where you need to, focus on the parts that you need to, and then move on. All right, so here we go. Let's do this right hand only. Let's count, let's do 10 together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, ten. If you had music playing, sorry, I'm gonna, if you had music playing, you could do it to the rhythm. Um, you could also, like I said, skip count or something. I don't think I said that. I, that was in my last video I made. Okay, sorry. So we're gonna do, let's count my twos now. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 20. Switch. Let's just go to V dribble now, side to side. Like I said, let's just go to V dribble, side to side, stand up tall for just a little bit. And then let's work all the way down. Try to get in as many in a row as you can. It might get away. Try to just keep it dribbling still. Try to go down really slow. And a little higher. Do some V dribble. All right. Keep practicing that V dribble. When you think you have that, that V dribble down, another move is to go V dribble with just one hand. Going boom. Uh, I'm keeping that in because that's hilarious. I didn't break the school laptop either, hallelujah. Okay, forwards and back. I hope you're laughing at coach. I'm laughing at myself. Okay, so I'm gonna show that from this side. I'm gonna slow down. Forward, back, V dribble. And sometimes you get tired of being bent over, so then stand up, take a break, or walk and kind of get that leg workout going in. Okay, let's do a couple more on this side. I think that was about 20, I wasn't really counting. Let's count on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Uh, okay, so that's V dribble. Let's try V dribble in the front. So your hand just stays in front of you, but notice the ball is gonna to try to make a V going side to side. All right, V and sway with the ball. That's huh? so gonna be this is fun. And again, other hand, your other hand, notice my other hand is ready. Okay, let's just do 10 more on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And if you don't want to stay stationary, then you can switch. Okay, other hand. V dribble to the other side. And then back and forth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten. And again, your practice does not need to have to look exactly like coaches. You can try different things, count and set your own number goals based on where you're at. Okay, let's do between the legs now. So this, the V dribble is good for between the legs because if you just start with your legs apart, you can, so you may not see my face, but I'm trying to get closer to the speaker so you can hear me. Okay, so on this one, you're gonna already have the ball to the side and you can press it through, and again, other hand ready, and then stop on that side. So you could just try, dribble, 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 like you're gonna do your V dribble in front of you, push, and then stop. And try to push, and then stop. Again, low, and your body in front of you, because right now, like, you're the deepest in my imagination, I'm trying to get this, I'm like, uh-uh. And then I would wanna bring my other foot forward if that was the case. Let's try from the other side now. Other foot forward, push. Oh, and stops, coach. This is two. Push. Yeah, but you're like, coach, you're just coach. I love it. I don't care. I'm having fun. Okay, then you can try to just do back and forth. And again, if you have little mess ups, just stop on that side, get ready, and send it back. Try it up higher, give yourself a break. Okay, and then the other foot forward. And again, taller and smaller. Okay, that's um, now if you're ready for between the legs while you're moving. Oh, so uh, I said between the legs while you're moving. Sorry if this is weird learning. So you're going to get ready to push through, step, push through, because it's not just a V dribble, if you notice, it's just where I decided to have my leg and when. So up, push through, push through. I'm going to kind of walk this way. And then sort of. All right. So you could work on, again, going through a chair. I'm sorry about that. Did I give you the chill? A chair is also good because you just stay off the edge. Again, like hands are ready. You aim for right in between. And again, you could go over and stop. Over and stop. Or you can just try to get that back and even while you're here, you can maybe try to put your legs apart right here. Okay, so lots of different ways to just try to keep, a lot of different ways to just try to keep continuity. That just means I keep dribbling, even if it's not exactly how you want to try to just not ever put two hands on the ball. Um, at the same time as a basketball player. Okay, so let's do behind the back now. There is the chair. So remember our V dribble that we did where we went like this? Well, that will be helpful in this next one. If the ball is on the right side, you want the right leg back and the left leg forward because usually behind the back means you're going to try to be going the other direction. So um, if I were to face this way and I'm practicing my behind the back, I'm going to start by just trying back and forth. And then on the back, I'm then going to, once it gets back, I'm going to push it and pass it behind myself so that it comes up to over this side. And then push back to over this side. But I'm going to change feet when I do that. Okay? So I can just go push it back and around. Other side, the dribble, the dribble, back and forth again with a close shot. Okay, 
So then you're behind the back, you can try to do on the move. So every time you go around and back, you're gonna try to push, so if it comes back, you're gonna push it to this foot, and then as you step forward, you're gonna push that, this hinder to that one. Okay, I'm gonna try. Okay, we got a pause too on this side, on that side. You could also try, try behind the back and then through your front leg to your other hand. So, the same thing. So that foot's gonna be forward because it's gonna come under from behind instead. You could also try figure eight. So a good beginner figure eight is just to go through pass, stop, pass, stop, pass, stop, or the other way, the other way. You hand it to the other one another way to, to put it on the ground, but more challenging is up in the air. And try to go faster and faster. Again, maybe count and reverse. I'm squeezing my core muscles when I'm doing that. I am swinging with the ball, that also helps. All right, so then between the legs, okay, so through, figure eight, you can take as many, like as many dribbles as you want. Get it around, make them super little. Again, see sometimes I just tell myself, again, how, I practice. Okay, I think I've given a lot of ideas. One last one, the spider dribble. Again, work on one until you master it well, like that V dribble. Then from that V dribble, I think you saw that it gets, you can go behind the back then and through the front of your legs, through the back of your legs, practicing still or moving. Okay, the spider dribble, demands a squat. And I'm gonna show you slow-mo first. So you get in a low squat and the pattern goes down, down, it doesn't matter which hand. Uh, but one hand, one hand, then the other hand, other hand. So you're gonna go dribble, 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 dribble. Forward, forward, back, back, forward, forward, back, back. And you're gonna feel a nice little leg burn too. Ready? You want to just try to keep the ball right in the middle. <sighs> Whatever you want to get good at, practice that. The gist is practice with the ter determination, practice with fun. Like um, maybe while you're practicing your dribbles and trying to keep your eyes up, um, mom or dad could show you flashcards for math or. They could show you sight words or whatever it is you're trying to learn um, or master. All right, my Roadrunner friends, I'm gonna, uh, let's see. Let's see, let's see. The last things, okay. So, uh, the last little thing as I catch my breath here is that tomorrow we're gonna have Wiggle Wednesday. That means they come prepared with like a mat and comfy shoes and some water and music that you want. Because I'm going to actually be listening to my own music because I am i don't want to violate music sharing rules on YouTube. Um, so then you can listen to whatever you like because I know you're like, coach, not everybody is going to love like a baby shark. I mean, sixth grade would love baby shark. but. You know, not everybody. Um, so um, choose your own music. And I'm trying to post within the nine to 10 o'clock hour. That's my goal, but we'll see how it goes. This is my second time making this video and I'm sure I left things out. Um, I might do in like a series two of sorts, um, you know, practicing dribbling, hop, stopping and pivoting is something that we didn't really get to. You should add some defense to this fun. So the way you can make it even more fun, intense, and give it more cardio is get somebody to play with you. You could play like 
um, dribble and somebody tries to get it away. And then um, you give, maybe you set a timer of sorts, especially if you're playing with an older sibling or a younger sibling or somebody that's like maybe has more skill than you. If somebody has less skill than you, give grace to them, get them to keep playing with you by like taking fair turns. So try to maintain the ball and then they do. And um, that way you guys can get better at working with defense. Then take those things. If you have your own hoop at home and practice those dribble skillers skills there. Um, yeah, keep it going. We played dribble tag before. That's where if you have your own ball, like everybody has their own ball, you try to like knock each other's ball away. But I don't know what your equipment situation is at, is at home. Okay, so Wiggle Wednesday tomorrow and share. Share on the Google Photo album. I saw that there's more. That's what I actually am going to do next in the morning after I get done sharing a video with you guys. Hopefully give you something to do during the day after you've already done some schoolwork. Then um, I'm going to sit and chit chat with you all online. Yay! I've been having so much fun. Again, share on the Google Photo album. You can sign up for Remind.com by getting to a text to the number 81010. And in the body of the text, put the at symbol, at P-E runner, P-E-R-U-N-N-E-R. -N -N -E and <clears throat> all right, keep in touch once a week, at least, um, with being in touch. Hello. And say, tell me how you're doing and tell me um, how you're staying active. Sorry. <laughs> and I love you guys. I miss you. Bruh!